Hello, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com, sponsored by Betfred. I'm James Gordon and I'm with the enthusiastic Drew Derbyshire. Uh, we're going to talk about Grand Final, Great Britain, I ain't got any with G's, but Rugby League Nines as well. Um, we'll go through all the latest news and what have you that's on the website. Um, please do leave your comments as usual, we'll give you a shout out um, and if there's anything you want to want us to debate or that you want us to talk about, please do leave that in the comments. I'm just getting another live video up, James. Yeah, Drew's not on his phone, he's there reading the comments. So, um, we'll start with uh, with the grand final then. St. Helens, uh, pretty, well, comprehensive might be a bit too, bit of a stretch, but a fairly comfortable win for St. Helens in the end. Yeah, I, I don't think it was ever um, going Salford's way right from the the first whistle, to be honest, James, because I think it was the second tackle uh, that Lee Moss would knock the ball on and then it landed back in the, the hands of Saints uh, with just seconds on the clock and, and Saints then peppered the Salford line. Salford, uh, Saints were 10, ten metres away from the Salford line uh, from the first from the first minute and they just uh, they rolled over them in, in the end. I, I think Salford, Salford's forwards did struggle with, with that St. Helens. Um, they were just too power, too powerful. Luke Thompson uh, came up with a tremendous performance through the middle, playing seventy-two minutes straight, and Alex Walmsley wasn't uh, far behind him in the pecking order in terms of the Harry Sunderland Trophy votes as well. So, um, Saints were just formidable on the night, and and, and well deserved winners, aren't they? They, they? they ran away with the league, the league leader shield that it wrapped up by sixteen points. Uh, a hundred and twenty-four year record, um, and I think it was just a, a very well deserved uh, accolade for a, a very strong season. I think it was probably the best result for Super League to get Salford in the final. So you had all that build up with Salford, you had the interest of the underdog, but then ultimately St. Helens, the best team, won. Um, I know Sky and the RFL, well, the Super League, I should say, have released a, a statement saying that it was the best, um, most viewed. Super League match of all time, basically. Yeah, and, um, and interestingly enough, it was 43% higher than the 2018 final between Warrington and Wigan. 43%, mm. that's a, a hefty amount. I've seen, I seen a tweet earlier from um, Alex Graham, I think he's like an outspoken Wigan fan on, on Twitter, and um, he basically said, imagine if Sky promoted it better, because there's a lot of... Um, the trailers and stuff that they put out, you know, when they say, right, this is what's coming up in the next month or whatever, Super League Grand Finals, very, they seem to play it down or it's not as prominent as other sports. So um, there's obviously a, an argument that says, well, imagine if you promoted it, how many viewings it'd get. There's also the argument. But like, do, do they want to promote it because of, obviously they, they want to cheat? cheat well, someone, someone, did say, they? someone did say that. Like, are they trying to like quieting it down to get a cheap deal on the TV but then that sort of contradicts coming out with a you know because it wasn't just a Super League statement it was it had a quote from a Sky director in there so it's not as if they're trying to hide away from it whether it's a little bit of I, I don't know because I mean in many ways it's a big the sport up but not yeah too but much. I mean in many ways it's a, a strange one because you know imagine if BT Sport for instance look at that and think oh actually we might have a look at this that potentially then what Sky don't want, they don't want to get in a bidding war, do they? They want to be how they've always been in the last 23 years of Super League, that they are the sole bidder or whatever, and they're by far the favourites to get it. I Personally, I don't see it going away from Sky. No, I don't. I, I think, I, I think it would be pretty wrong to go away from Sky as well, because I think... Uh, rugby league and obviously Super League especially is I, I mean, synonymous I, with Sky. I, 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 <laughs> They've got to break it up, haven't they? They've got to separate Super League and Championship. That's the main thing. But I don't see a, I don't see a situation where Sky don't get the Super League rights. Um, I, I don't really see that. Um, we've, we've said a few times all that the Sunday night slot is is we we witnessed towards the back end of the season in the Championship. It works a treat, doesn't it? And and you get loads of neutrals watching because you've got to think. People, some people go out on Fridays and Saturdays, so so a lot of people will be busy. But the majority of people staying on a Sunday evening, mm. and, uh, and the majority of rugby league fans will be willing to watch uh, a Super League game. So 
Um, I, uh, not, a, not a Super League game, a rugby league game in general. Um, so that's why I think the Championship would do well if it had that Sunday, Sunday night. You've got, I mean, you've also got the, the whole Toronto thing as well because ultimately Sky could basically say every Saturday night there'll be a game now because you could have the Catalans home games, the Toronto mm -hmm. home games. But I would imagine that slot sort of late Saturday evening, maybe 8, 9 o'clock, is actually quite a night, especially in the summer, there won't be a huge amount of competition for that sort of viewing. So again, having a Toronto home game on Sky at eight or nine o'clock is potentially a you know a big mm. a big draw as well. So yeah, but not, yeah. But I'd say, I'd say the Sunday is more important than the Saturday. If I'm honest. But, but that'd be for the championship though, wouldn't yeah. it? So that's separate. You know, it's like I suppose it depends on our Sky going to go for the championship. But I think the important thing is is they don't get in the situation that they've been in for the last five or six years where the the championship rights are basically hoovered up by Sky, but they don't use them. You've got yeah. to avoid that. Going back to the grand final, I thought, you know, there was a... Uh, Sky basically said at our time that Saints were very dominant in the first half, and they were for the first 25, but Salford did really well to get back. I thought the I thought the way Saints played, the last tackle plays for me was the most interesting aspect, because obviously Old Trafford very short in goal. You know, we see it all the time, don't we? They, they tumble down. Saints were very... Clever, I think, and they weren't forcing the issue in that first 25 minutes. They weren't kicking on the last as much. They were just making sure yeah. that they kept it on the field. And I think that made a difference because if Salford had have started more sets on the 20 with seven tackles, then they might have been able yeah. to, to make a bit of inroads. Yeah, me, me and Tom Bramwell of the Manchester Evening News, we, we were speaking about that before the game. We were sat next to each other in the press box and obviously when, when no, not many people are in the ground, you're just looking around and making observations and the... The, the in goal areas are really really small, um, like incredibly small for for a rugby league pitch, um, because obviously at Old Trafford you've got the mm, yeah the, the, drop the dip. As well, yeah. Um, so and like we've seen over the years, plenty of times over the years in the grand finals that uh, wingers when they go when they're chasing oh, yeah. a grubber kick and they go flying into into the billboards off off that little uh, archway should we call it, um, but Saints played the played the game very smart, but. I, and Salford just didn't want half time to come, did they? Because they had the, the momentum was going their way in that last 15 yeah. minutes of the first half. What, what did you think of the Lollahir try? I thought it was a try. I thought it, I thought it was a try. I think if it went to the screen, I think that was going to be given. Do you um, think? Because I, I mean, obviously, was... Logan Tompkins did get in the way. I mean, it was obstruction to a... But it's I, a difficult I, one. But, I, but I, I think the Saints man pulled Logan Tompkins back. I think the Saints man... I think, was it Wormsley? I can't remember. I think, but, but, it, I think it was I mean, obviously, the rule easily made his way across. Yeah, and the the rule is that you don't. Lola here basically gave himself up, didn't he? I mean, in terms of he didn't go behind Tompkins, yeah. he stopped. But then they've still given obstruction against Tompkins, even though well, I, I mean, it was a difficult one. The, the the thing with that sort of situation is it's one of those situations where, you know, would you have gone to the video after we, you know after you put it down? But I mean, there was a few decisions that people. I mean, I don't think. I don't think the decisions had an impact on the no. game. Um, the main one that people were talking about was the the Dudson one in the second half, where Salford pretty much had to score next, and um, and Dudson lost the ball a couple of yards out. Now it, it, it wasn't though because I, I think I thought Aaron Smith pulled Dudson. Yeah, and it got and it, for, yeah, well, and he looked, Aaron Smith pulled him back, and, and Dudson obviously. Uh, went with the momentum, and I thought that should have been a solve for penalty. Not a yeah, I mean, penalty. but and and yeah, I think that's the main one people discuss. But I think that sort of scenario is an issue with the whole game more so than just that one incident. I think you'd see that happen multiple times in the season, and sometimes it'd be given as a knock on, and sometimes it'd be given as a penalty, and it opens up that debate. You know, do you? Do we need to make that a bit clearer in terms of well, if the ball comes loose? It's a, it's a knockoff. Mm. Simple as that. Or do they do they allow a bit like they do when players carry on going after a, a held goal? Do they allow them to reset in that sort of situation? You know, if it's a, yeah. if the referee's not sure of which way it's gone, instead of making him decide either way, why not just say, well, just reset the tackle? I, I think you could possibly do that. Too, because though. he shouted. As far as I'm concerned, he I, shouted, I, I, I always think them them calls were were the held and they just keep going because they're not at the ref. I, I'm just chancing I'm, around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. like, if, if, say, if, say if, once you shout it held, if something happens after that, which is what happened in this instance, surely you, it should be they can reset and play the ball. Because 
it's it's different. If if Dudson's in a tackle and there's three men and he's trying to get his arm free and it comes out, but if the ref shouted held and said play the ball, whatever, and it's come out in between him calling and the play the ball, why couldn't you just reset the tackle? Yeah. So uh, I agree with you on that one. To be fair, that that would be a pretty good idea to to just keep the game going and keep it flowing. Um. So yeah. So uh, I mean, all round a positive, a positive. Got a couple of comments. Day. Uh, Beryl Hodgson says St. Helens the best team all season congratulations to them uh, David Taylor top fan David Taylor he's a top, top fan, fan. Uh, he said do not propose t- uh, scheduling TV games in competition with other games e.g. championship on Sunday afternoon well I mean the, I mean, going on that TV scheduling there's a massive issue with the Sky game on Friday night because mm. it's almost pointless having a Sky game on a Friday night when there's four other games you know and that's something that really need. but the problem is is can you start saying to Leeds, look, you can't play on a, Saturday, on a Friday night if you're not on Sky? It, they, they've sort of made a rod for their own back with that, I think, at the moment. David also says, if you two disagree with each other uh, over the ref's decision, how can you say the ref was right or wrong? Just get on with it. I, I can they, kinda, they, need, they, need to, they need to do... I can kind of understand where David's coming no, from. No, we, we, both, we both thought the... Um, I was he on about the Lola here thing? I thought the Lola here would have tried. I, I certainly was on the fence. I, I you've seen him given, you seen Yeah, him I was either. definitely on the fence with all here. I, when I watched it live, I thought they were unlucky. Watching the replays, you can sort of see, yeah, maybe why it was disallowed. Uh, but but, then, I, mean, by, it, but yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it did make a difference. Yeah. St. Helens with a better team anyway. Um, Luke Thompson's performance, wow. Yeah. What a, what a, what a, what a display from a front rower. Uh, I asked Justin Almack after the game, is there, a, is there a better front rower in the world than Thompson right now? And uh, he replied, no. uh, not as far as he's concerned. Do you think he's going to try and sign him for Gold Coast? Well, he should do, shouldn't he? He should try and sign him. Let, let's be honest. He should. It'd be, it'd be interesting to know whether there's a bit of a gentleman's agreement in place between Holbrook and Saints and whether they've said, look, don't come for any of our players for a year or two years or something. Mm. Uh, he's quite... Because well, making some fancies go at the NRL as well, doesn't it? Yeah, he does. Uh, Thompson is contracted to Saints just for next year, is it? Or well, is well it Saints have got a few of them tied up, haven't they? But... Um, so, is it, so he's still contracted to Saints, so that means Gold Coast would have to stump up a considerable... A a well, uh, well, Gold Coast have got a bit of an ongoing situation with Ash Taylor, haven't they, where he's on a million dollars a year and he, he's been taking time out of the game. If he goes or if they get him mm. off the cap, all of a sudden you've got an absolute wedge of money there that... You could, you yeah. could spend. Yeah. Uh, it, it probably it, Thompson would require marquee money now, wouldn't he? he in Super League, deal. you mean? Yeah. 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 Well, in, in Super League, you would. And then obviously, there's always that debate: is are forwards worth the marquee well, money? Well, I'd, I'd say Thompson is. I won't say Trent Merritt is because Trent Merritt is just he's a, he's a quality player. Trent Merritt, don't but, get but, me wrong, he, but, he's, a, he's a workhorse, but. <laughs> Thompson so who's saying that now? Coot and, is Coot Marquee? No, Coot's not Marquee. So Nike, I, don't, I don't think they've got, I don't, I don't think they've got Marquee. Oh, they're not doing it well. I mean, obviously, if they've got that flexibility to do that, then Lomax has still got that. Lomax is one of the players who's got that little bit of central funding yeah. money, hasn't he, as well? Yeah. Um, George, George Williams was one of them as well, I think, but obviously he's yeah. going to the camera. Yeah, interesting, interesting one, anyway. Um, all in all, I mean, I wrote editor's column on Monday that it's a relatively, I think Saints winning capped a success, relatively success, successful season for Super League. You had, I think, they had the best aggregate round, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it was at Easter weekend. Um, obviously, you had the, the Super League record crowd at New Camp for, for the Catland game. Um, obviously, you had the, the relegation battle went all the way to the wire. Um, you had some great stories in, in Salford and, and even London, even though they went down. You know, Warrington, um, with like their social media activity was 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 built up as a positive. I think I think every club have improved on social media this year. I think uh, I think we, we've seen obviously um, this morning as well when Huddersfield announced um, James Gavitt from the. Uh, it's on a two-year deal or a three-year deal. Or? It's on a two-year deal, isn't it? I know, but I I seen something on their website that initially it said. In the headline, he was on a three-year deal, and then in the, in the paragraph underneath, oh, no, oh, I, I didn't see that actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I, see I think it's a two-year deal. Um, speaking speaking of Gavit, I think he's he's a decent signing, and he got he's been, he's been going well in the NRL, but he does struggle with injuries, so I'm not sure. <laughs> while we're on while we're on obviously they've I'm confirmed sure. Ashton Golding um, from Leeds this week. Um, now obviously Golding was. 
he came into Leeds, was given a four year deal, a number one shirt, he was going to be the next big thing and then Jack Walker came along five minutes later and um, kiboshed that. Um, who knows what was going on at Leeds at that time and who's not figured that out first. Golden played well first in the, in the Championship playoffs. Huddersfield, uh, you, you would say Huddersfield are one of the teams that are at risk, aren't they, of Toronto coming up in terms of, whereas London came up and went straight back down, you don't envisage Toronto doing that, and Huddersfield are one of the teams at risk. Now, what about Daniel McIntosh? Do you think, is he a centre? He, he's, yeah, he's, centre? He's, he's a centre. Is it, is it? So, you, so you're thinking they'll go gold I, for, for me, one. for me, McIntosh is a great player going forward and attack, but he's a bit iffy under the eyeball. Whereas Golden, I think he's a solid player. Reliable. I, I player. thought Golden played well first in yeah. the grand final. I, I, I actually like Golden as a player. He's, he's received some criticism from Leeds fans in the past, but I, I do rate Golden. I think so, he's, so, he's so, so obviously they're going to be Golden, McGill, Ray. Uarte, Wardle, that's, and yeah, McIntosh. Well, is that what you're? Uarte, that's if he's. If he's fit, if he's fit yeah. we've all seen him about yeah, ten he's not times in last yeah. year. Um, but obviously they've got senior twins as well who can come in on the wing. Then you'll have probably McIntosh and Wardle. Oh, is Wardle back row? Wardle. Well, you, you've got Kudjo, haven't you? But Kud- again, Kudjo's another one with injury. So it's it's an interesting time for for Huddersfield because if, when they've got all the fit players available. Then they're a strong side off. Yeah. Well, when, I mean, when when, I mean the Magic Weekend. I mean, I know Hull are obviously bottom, uh, hot and cold. I mean, Huddersfield absolutely pumped Hull at Magic Weekend, and and them young players, McIntosh, um, Oliver Russell, um, Matty English, players like that were really, really prominent on well, that day. Jordan Turner. Um, who are they? Who are they looking at? As you think, Russell? Is, have they got to just put the nail the flags on Russell and say, right, he's the number seven? They've obviously got Holmes as well, and you've got Frawley, haven't they? And Gaskell. I you mean Frawley's got? He's I, got a I, I don't. I don't rate Matt Frawley. Um, really, I think he's he has been a little bit of a disappointment since he's gone to the Giants. I, I'd get. i I'm massive um, on club providing youngsters with a chance, so I, I'd give it to yeah, Russell. Frawley Russell. And, yeah. I, and when, whenever we've seen Russell play, he's, he's, he, right. he's, he's done well and he's gone well. I know. We, I know. We, he tends to. Sometimes back in and out of games, sometimes goes missing, and then other games he'll, he'll win them a, yeah, uh, yeah, a game with, yeah. with a drop. But well, then that's half back. That, that's young, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. A, a general young half back, isn't it? We've seen yeah. that with Truman. Mm. Truman obviously impresses more times than not, but yeah. we've seen in games that he, he'll sometimes go missing for a little while. But that's, that's just down to youth and inexperience, I think. We'll talk about the women's grand final as well, which was on Friday night. Um, Leeds beating Casford again, so a, a, a second, a double for Leeds in the women's game. They won, they beat Casford, of course, in the Challenge Cup final as well. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously good for Leeds that they're, they're scooping up the women's because obviously they've been struggling in the men's in recent weeks, uh, in recent seasons. Um, some interesting points coming out of that game. Um, obviously, you know, Courtney Hill, who was man of the match in the... or woman of the match or player of the match or whatever I'm allowed to say. She was player of the match in the cup final. Um, obviously, she's got this background where she played cricket and all that, and she's sort of making noises that they need to start paying the players. Um, which is which is great in theory, but when there's only a thousand people watching, it's very difficult to well, to come yeah, up with. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough one, it's because when when... They've, sometimes they don't have a thousand people watching. They've only yeah. had a, a It's only the big game, like Casper yeah. games, isn't they, it, really? They've only had a thousand people on a couple of occasions. And, and let's be pretty realistic. Castleford don't get a thousand through the gates every home game. Yeah. They, they get the odd one. They, they get, they've, they've, had, they've had a thousand a few times, but it's not yeah, like every week. Exactly. And um, they're only paying, I think, is it three quid to get in or something yeah. like that? So it's not as if... It's so, not like you've got a thousand people paying a ten or twenty exactly, quid a go. Exactly. So if, it, if, it, if, it, if you put the prices the same as the men's, then obviously they drop yeah. as well. I'm, not, I'm trying to not not be negative on the on the women's game because I, I do like how how it's um, it's I mean, risen I, in profile over the last couple of years, especially especially since the women's Super League brand yeah, yeah, has yeah. been introduced. It's, it's definitely going in the right direction, but I think you've but, got but like, think, right, you've got to be realistic. Yeah, but but I think I think getting paid is hey, it'd be great if they could get paid and it'd be great. And it'd be great for for the the girls who were playing, but I, you just can't see it because it's just not at that stage yeah. yet, is it? Does it's, it? It's, I suppose it's there's physically, a, it's, does it's it's as a brand. It's just not at that stage. Whereas you look over at the the women's NRL, um, 
they're getting they're getting big crowds every game. But there's only a couple of teams who are who are professional. Well, the semi professional. I think I think maybe the model is do you try and get the international players on central contracts. I think that's a, I know I was speaking to someone in hockey field hockey yesterday, and they've got um, there's like an international league now. So the Great Britain players are centrally contracted and full time, but they'll still play for the club teams on weekends. Mm. Apart from when there's an international, and maybe that's probably you could say. We've got our elite 25 England players, a full-time contract. Obviously, they can do development work and grow women's rugby league in the day. But, I mean, even then, even if, even to get 25 women on even a modest 25 grand a year, that's still costing you half a million quid, isn't it? You yeah. know what I mean? So, um, it's, got to keep, it's got to keep moving in the right direction without without getting too ahead of itself. So, well, it's a chief executive's words, Jim. It's probably important to note as well, in case anyone doesn't know, all all the players, men and women, competing in the World Cup Nines this weekend I will receive see. a two thousand pound payment. So, Blake Austin. Did I hear the G, the GB ones get five grand? Is that right? Did I hear that? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what the GB lads get. I, I'm sure. I think the Aussie Test players a couple of years ago was getting twenty grand a, a Test game. <laughs> So that's that's probably explains a lot why they don't they don't they're not keen on playing internationals because they've got to fork out <laughs> thirty <laughs> players, uh, twenty. And that's probably piece. why the Fijians like playing for Australia because <laughs> they get twenty grand playing for so, Australia. So so um, yeah, and, and obviously the Kiwis as well. Obviously Charles Nickel Clockstad, we, we mentioned him last week. Obviously he, playing for the Cook Islands, he'd probably be getting yeah, next nothing. to nothing yeah. for, for playing for, for his heritage, whereas yeah. playing for the Kiwis, yeah. they'll probably receive five grand a, a, a match or something like that. But So it's, it, it is good and it's a step in the right direction for the women's game this weekend that they will receive this, the same amount of, amount of money than the men. So you'll, you'll, you'll have Blake Austin receiving £2,000 for representing England in the, in the World Cup Nines and George Roach receiving £2,000 for representing uh, in the World Cup now. We'll, we'll talk about the Nines in a little bit. And tele- the women's game will be televised as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah, so uh, that, men, men and women's te- so televised good. on Sky, and Sky Sports, main event, and um, I think it is. Over Friday morning, Saturday morning as well. Is it Friday and Saturday? Is it? It's not Saturday and Sunday? No, it's Friday. Well, Friday and Saturday over here. Oh, Saturday and Sunday over yeah. here. Right. Um, no, that's not right, is it? Hmm? Oh, well, anyway. Um, let's run through some, some headlines, some news stories. Dewsbury have handed a new deal to Andy Gabriel, a um, quick little winger there in the Championship. They've also signed Sam Morehouse from Leeds. Um, I don't know if you've seen this, the amateur sucker punch, Langworthy Reds against Chorley in the, was it It was NCL 2 final, yeah. was it? Division 2 final um, at, at Victoria Park. He's been, he's been banned for life. I'd, I'd rec- I, if you've not seen it, I'd recommend... Um, the, the video's embedded in the article, so... Yeah, so that one. And, he's, uh, been, he's been banned for life. It's, um, uh, Connor Jones, is it? Is Callum, Callum Jones. Callum Jones, sorry. Connor, it's not Connor, Connor, Connor Jones, Jones who's That would have been, uh, been a story. Um, Robert Elston has welcomed Toronto Wolfpack to Super League, which is nice of him. Doncaster have signed Papua New Guinea Watson Boas on a two-year deal from Featherstone. Is he, is he at the nines? He is at the nines, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's representing the Cummels. Um... He was at Doncaster towards the back end of last season. They just made the move permanent. Lachlan Coote. And I spoke with Lachlan Coote on Tuesday. We're going to talk about... G- was it Tuesday? Monday? Tuesday? I don't know. Tuesday. GB. We're going to talk with GB in a bit. Uh, Lachlan Coote basically says he's done his time with Scotland and he's excited to play for Great Britain. Huddersfield signed Gave, we mentioned before. Salford have confirmed the signing of Elliot Kay, Reese Williams and Luke Yates from London Broncos. That was sort of your fault that they had to confirm it, Drew. I, I, I don't know who Ian Watson who sort of <laughs> Ian Watson sort of forgot who they'd announced and who they hadn't announced yeah um, um, I, but three solid signs yeah. I, I think Reese Williams especially for a club like Salford because Salford have got a, a thin squad anyway and Reese Williams he's never injured is he he, play, he plays so yeah, many he, games he, 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 he definitely hit 100 consecutive games yeah. anyway, um, and LAK solid option centre winger or full back and, and, and I presume both of them are at the nines Kade yeah Williams. we're, we're yeah. Wales and um, yeah, Yates is, is one of the most underrated players yeah, the, league, well I mean Yates is, a, Yates is probably a typical Salford signing isn't he in like yeah. recent years where they pick someone up I mean he, he got wrapped playing for London don't get me wrong but they pick someone up who's got the potential to be yeah. a, a top line player. Um, Hulk KR and Dewsbury have linked up on dual reg. There's, um, there's an interesting quote in that piece as well that um, 
they, they, they say that some Dewsbury players could play for Hull Kiana's reserves next season. Oh, well, I suppose I've, I've spoken to a few people about the reserves, and obviously, there's a bit of. I think a few of the clubs are quite excited about the prospect of getting players playing for the reserves so they can have a look at them. All right. So, like, Witness, I, I spoke to someone from Witness, and Witness are looking at maybe if they can pull some amateur players in from the town, get them playing for the reserves, and then impress, then they get in the first team. Whereas, you know, it's, not, it's unlikely that the first team is going to pick up an amateur player and put them straight into the fire. Uh, so maybe that's bad. Like Casper and York are another another yeah, pair yeah. that have linked up. Um, I spoke to Zach Hardacre on Tuesday as well. Um, he said he was shocked at his call up to the Great Britain squad. So there's a few quotes from him. He also revealed that him and Jackson Hastings had a bit of a tiff at the uh, Salford Wigan semi final. Um, they've not spoken since, but they're going to make it up. I actually asked Zach Hardacre. I said, "It must be hard when you play for a team and obviously there's players you don't like." And he actually said to me that. He's never actually had a teammate that he didn't that he didn't, that he didn't have that that so he said yeah there's there's people who are unusual who who are a bit weird or say strange things or they're a bit different but he says generally he's never known any he's yeah. never known never been in a team or known a team that you know um, players don't like each other or whatever he said that him and James Jones view Cannon very polar opposite but they used to get on very well. Um, Interna mm -hmm. The Rugby League International Federation has renamed to International Rugby League. I wonder who, how much money they got for that to, to come up with that. Ryan Hampshire has made a U turn, U -turn and decided U -turn, yeah, has decided to stay at Wakefield. Um, now we have different opinion on this because I quite like Michael Carter's quote in the uh, in the Wakefield press release, where obviously Hampshire or his agent has been pushing for more money. Wakefield have obviously said we're going to offer you this. You know, like like it all lump it sort of thing. Um, Hampshire's then they've obviously then announced that he's not agreed a new deal, and then obviously he's come back probably having gone out and realised that he's probably not going to get a better offer el elsewhere. Um, and I thought Michael Carter, his comments, I think he's very pragmatic. He said that you know obviously they were they continued to be talking, and obviously people outside of them and outside of the club had started mouthing off about it. Um, but good, good business for me. I, 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 I just don't think clubs should openly comment on speculation. Well, but they didn't know, did they? I mean, they, they released him, and then Carter's basically saying, well, they, they basically said they'd not agreed a new deal, and then obviously everyone was getting a bit, obviously making a bit of a fuss about it, and then he's basically said, look, they should have waited to, to see what, what's what, anyway. Um, Jackson Hastings says he hopes Salford's success can put bums on seats, and that's a very interesting point. It'd be very interesting to see what Salford's first crowd of the season is next season um, well, hopefully they, even if, it, if it's just by a couple of hundred on average you get well, I mean, yeah, like, and any, any increase if you increase every year then you, you know you move forward Mark Percival says St Helens have proved they can win the big games by coming out on top in the 2019 Super League Grand Final um, I suppose you could say that though they were I'm, I'm going to say this and I don't mean to offend they were only playing Salford now I'm not I'm not taking away from Salford, but what I mean is that was Salford's first final. They weren't playing against a seasoned final team like a Wigan or a, uh, a Warrington or a Leeds. Just throwing that out there. Um, oh, I think you might offend The NRL you. Grand Final is staying in Sydney till 2046. Rugby league's dying. Which I'll be nearly retired then. I think 2046. Um, hopefully, uh, Hep Kale is leaving Witness. Oh. Um, Speaking on that, Phil Haynes has commented saying, give a shout out to Matt Kale for his services to Witness and all the best to him and his family. He will be missed at Witness. Yeah, uh, I've actually got one of Kale's um, match-worn shirts up in my house. There's a little fact for you. It's in the downstairs loo. Nice. Yeah. Um, you can always look at, at Kale while yeah, well, you're you do enjoy your yourself. Yeah, um, yeah Kale... Uh, Obviously, Witness, uh, Tim Sheen's obviously a good appointment for Witness. I can't remember what day that was last week. I think it was last Friday, was it not, it? Did we not talk about it? Uh, I don't think we did. I, um, think, I think it's a, a pretty strong appointment from the Vikings. I don't think you could really anyone can really mourn about that appointment anyway. He's, he's won the NRL. Uh, he's won a World, World Cup, Cup with yeah. Australia. He, he, did, he did a decent job at OKR. Obviously, he got them back from... Promoted to it's going to be league. interesting because obviously he won't have played. He haven't won't work with a part time yeah. team before. Um, but you'd imagine he, he'll attract some players. We're hearing of Blake Wallace maybe going to witness from Toronto. Um, 
Maybe. They've only got, I think Wigan's got 15 players at the moment on contract, and I think at least two of them probably won't be there. Um, so he's going to have to sign 10 players. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what are we now, middle of October? I mean, you'd think they're going to start pre season in maybe three, four weeks, so might be a busy few weeks for, for Widnes. Do you reckon Widnes will try and dual reg with anyone? I think Widnes should dual reg with Warrington. I think it just makes sense, it's only at the road. Um, they've obviously got Warrington have got players that have been at Widnes. They've got Danny Walker, they've got Brand, who obviously could go back to Widnes Sammy and Kibula. be familiar. They'd be familiar, you know, yeah, Kibula. Um, I think Witness are going to sign Pat Moran as well. I think he was at Warrington, so um, it just make to me it makes sense. I think for both because Witness need the bodies, Warrington need a, a decent team to get their players through. Because I mean, with all due respect to Rochdale and Swinton, has that been developing Warrington's players as they would have liked? In comparison to say, if you look at Leeds, who've been sending their players to Featherstone, Harry Newman. Have any of Warrington's dual reg players gone from playing dual reg every week to playing for Warrington every week? I don't think they have. You know, Livet's still a bit, you know, he's gone out to Wilkar now. Whereas if you look at Harry Newman, and okay, Leeds are being pants, but Harry Newman's gone, played for Featherstone at the top end of the championship, and then he's been able to slot right back into to the Leeds team in Super League. Um, ben Johnston is Hassan for York. He left Halifax at the end of the last season. James Webster, speaking of Featherstone, is has been confirmed as the new Featherstone coach because Ryan Carr has gone back to Australia. Um, I had to laugh a little bit on the Ryan Carr release. It was almost a bit like I think his his maybe his missus and his kids perhaps didn't quite like Featherstone and compared to Australia. What, which, what are you trying to say, Jim? I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that. Sydney or Featherstone? Yeah. Um, but I mean, a, a blow for Ferguson, it has to be said. The jury's still out on James Webster. I don't think he's got. A, he's not got a particularly good coaching record. Um, so interesting how that goes for Ferguson. The French Elite Two Championship um, was its third weekend. Villefranche at top of the league. They beat Pia fourteen ten at the weekend. We're only four weeks away from our trip to the French Magic Weekend for the Elite One Championship start of the season. So um, we look forward to that one. Um, Great Britain squad, should we talk about that? Hey, Paul KR confirmed Matt Parcel as well yeah. for 2020. Um, let's talk about, in fact, England Knights against Jamaica, which is, is it this Sunday? Sunday, um, yeah. Harry, Harry Smith and Morgan Smithies in that. Um, Harry Smith, Ollie Partington, Morgan Smithies, um, Ollie, Ollie Wilson, the young Warriorsfield forward, just been mm. called up today. Uh, and Jamaica have not got a bad team either. I know Ben Ben Jones Bishop was called up to that yesterday as well. Mason Kirton Brown as well involved. Ross Peltier, the England, Aston Golding. In England Knights squad, there's a few odd names in this, I have to admit. The England Knights squad, the 90 man squad, is Ashworth and Richardson from St. Helens, Bowden from Hull, Butler from London, Nye Levels from Salford, who was maybe a bit unlucky not to get Great Britain. Um, Greenwood, Partington, Powell, Smith, and Smithies from Wigan, Toby King and Lynham from Warrington, uh, Cruz Leeming, McIntosh and English from Huddersfield, Minikin from Cass, Newman, Oleski and Smith from Cameron Smith from Leeds. Um, a few odd ones, like, uh, I, I still not quite grasp the concept of the Knights. Why is Lynham playing in the Knights? Yeah. He's Surely they know what he's about now. He's been playing for a top Super League team. He must be, what, 26, 27? Yeah. Sim same with Powell, Sam Powell. I mean, I suppose they've got a name, a hooker, haven't they, I guess? Well, um, they have it in a view that they could possibly make the next World Cup team, don't they? Maybe. Um, right, so 20, great... 27, Tom Lyon. Yeah, so Great Britain then. Um, obviously, Blake Austin, Jackson Hastings and Lachlan Coop all named in the 24-man squad by the Australian coach. Um Zach Hardacre took a little bit of the sting out of that because he was a bit of a shock inclusion. Um, it's split opinion, it's fair to say. Um, I know Richie Mavers, we had a piece on the site, Richie Mavers basically said he, it doesn't sit right with him, Australians playing for Great Britain. Um, there's obviously the argument that... There's a few arguments, isn't there? There's the argument, well, if they were good enough to play for Australia, would they be playing for Great Britain? Probably not. Um, but then you could say, well, Cooch played for Scotland, so he deserves to play... My my Hastings is young and I think Hastings has nailed his flag to the mast and I think that's fair enough. My thing with Blake Austin is he's twenty is he twenty eight, Blake Austin? I think so. 
why, if Blake Austin qualified for England and Great Britain all this time, why wasn't he picked, or why wasn't he, why wasn't his hand up for selection when he was at Canberra? Why now? Do you know what I mean? And I think I, I said to you a, a while back, though, James. I, re, I remember reading a piece in the Australian press, and it was and it was backdated years ago that he said he, he, he would have liked to play for England. But why is he not picked up the phone sure. or whatever and and done it and done it that way? Um, sure. We had a, we were, we had we went to the Great Britain Media Day on Tuesday, whatever day it was. We did a little bit of a video piece on on the Facebook page. So if you want to dig that out. Um, our team, uh, did we agree on a starting team? We think Coote's going to be the fullback. Coote took fullback on the wings, they picked themselves, Ryan Alden, Jermaine McGilvery. Gildar. Centres, Gildar. I think Hardacre's going to play centre. And Hardacre, half backs. Oh, this was the one, I mean, it's a toss up that, isn't it? I'd play, I think I'd go Williams and Hastings. I think, I think I'll go with Widdup and. Uh, Hastings. Yeah, and then we've got. Um, I mean, would it has would it played? Is would it? Well, he's back? not, but he plays in the NRL. So no, I know, but he's he's been in, he's been covering from injury, hasn't he? Whether they'll throw him straight in remains to be seen. Oh, well, right, Oswald played Graham, five games. Graham, Hodgson, Thompson. Yeah. Uh, no, I I think Thompson might be loose forward. Um, why Ed Bateman, obviously. Why Ed Bateman? Thompson loose forward. Tom Burgess. And James Graham starting props. Wormsley on the bench. Hodgson at Hooker on the bench. Wormsley. Chris Hill. Jack Hughes. Daryl Clark and. That's it, that's four. Wormsley. Jack Hughes, are you Wormsley, Hill, Hughes, Hughes on the bench? Clark. Well, or Jake Connor, I suppose, because of his versatility. Let's Joe Philby. Well, I mean, they've all got a chance. I, I I don't think Phil. I think you've got. You've got I, think Phil Phil I think Phil. Right. I think Phil might play against Papua New Guinea, but I can't see him play against New Zealand. I think you've got. I think you've got to go with three forwards at least though, on the bench. I don't. I don't think you could have Connor well, and Slack so, so on the bench. You, you know, so do you think he'll pick one of them two and maybe go with Connor because of his versatility? If, if he's thinking possibly. Hodgson, Hodgson will play the eighty minutes. Yeah, possibly. Let's know what you think anyway. Um, this weekend then. Plenty of half back options. R- Rugby League nines this week. There's a story on the site, it's the latest story on the site, our, our NRL man in the know, Zach Holland, has done this one. It's everything you need to know about the Rugby League Nines. There's 12 men's teams that are in three groups of four. Three groups of four, Josh yeah. Jones, we've just had a comment from oh, Josh Jones. Jones, yeah. Um, three groups of four in the Nines. Um, England are with Wales, France and Lebanon. Um, who goes through? It must be the, the three so winners. The top, so the top two from oh, Pool A, and then the, the the leading teams in Pool C. And, um, oh, so they fixed it so Australia and New Zealand get through. Basically, that's what you're saying. Well, I'm not saying they fixed it, Jim. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the games will be played Friday and Saturday. The first game is at twenty past eight tomorrow morning. France versus Lebanon. Then England women are on against Papua New Guinea. Then England men. Against Wales is it ten past nine? Um, on Friday, then it's Tonga Cook Island, Samoa Fiji. Then there's a double header of Australia, New Zealand women, and then men. And then for some bizarre reason, the last game on Friday is Papua New Guinea versus USA, which is eleven twenty-five a.m. So if you can pull a sickie at work and maybe go in at lunch, you're laughing tomorrow. Um, we'll we, probably have it on we in the office here. It's a lot earlier on uh, on Saturday. Very early. One 1.30 a.m. GMT. What's that? 2.30 a.m. British summer time. Mm. Um, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea women. I mean, you're looking at... The, the England are on at 5.25 a.m. on Saturday, if you're that way inclined. You might be best waiting maybe till the men's semi-final, which is at 5 to 9. You don't want to be getting up too early on a Saturday. The, men's fi- uh, the women's final's at 9.45 a.m., the men's finals at 11 a.m. Nines, I'm not a massive fan of nines, but here's the rules. Each game is two halves of nine minutes. There's unlimited interchanges. It's five tackle sets instead of six. God knows why. Um, Simbins are three minutes rather than ten. Um, conversions are drop kicks, not standard conversions, with a 25-second shot clock. 
You get five points for a try under the sticks, rather than four. If a match is a draw, they have golden try, not golden point. Um, and as well as 40, 20 kicks, they'll have 20, 40 kicks as well. Um, it, it should be good, shouldn't it? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm intrigued to see how it works, to be honest, because I've... I watched a little bit of the Auckland Nines a couple of years back um, when the NRL teams competed in it. I think Sam Tompkins actually played in that, so he'll, at least he'll have a little bit of experience. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing how it works because obviously we're, we're all kind of new to this Nines concept. I don't think there's any pressure on any teams to do well or to 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 go far. Uh, I think everyone's. It's, I think it's like a bit of a party feel good atmosphere um, over in Sydney at the minute regarding the Nines. So I'm just interested to see how it works. I'm interested to to see uh, some of the quicker play. I'd like to see Regan Grace uh, for Wales involved in the nines because he's got pace to burn. Josh Adol Carr for Australia, uh, who's also very, very quick. I think they'll probably be the quickest two players on the park. Uh, and I'm also interested to see how, how some of the halfbacks for Kaelin Ke Ponga uh, George Williams. My thing with nines is... I think they could fry. My thing with nines is... Surely other sports come up with shortened versions because they don't feel like their normal sport is good enough. Whereas, do we need nines? You know, is 13s really that boring that we need nines? The other thing is, obviously, rugby sevens is the comparison. Um, now, in rugby sevens, they tend to have... It's almost like a separate circuit. It's almost like another code rugby sevens. They have players who specifically just yeah. play sevens. It's not the same Mason players. Mason Kersen play sevens for Jamaica. Yeah, it's like, there's not... There's not a separate. Um, there's not a separate pool of players playing for each. Um, I just don't know if we need nines. I think. No, I, I, it'd be I, interesting to see what it's like, though. I mean, I quite like the format of everyone playing at the same ground back to back. I think that's quite cool. And it's pretty good. Obviously, it's just eighteen minute matches, so obviously mm. it keeps it fresh. Is is it? Is there an argument that a mid season nines might be a better sort of format? You know, like a Magic Weekend style. Oh, let's not get into that. Type, magic. Uh, no, let's not be making another Magic Weekend type thing. Um, comments before we finish. Well, we've not got many comments. Uh, Phil Ayn says, "Will Joe Reds be used as much now as the clubs have reserves running next year?" I don't think. Obviously, it won't be used as much in twenty twenty as what it is now. Uh, because obviously the Super League clubs will have a, a reserve game near enough every single weekend of the Super League season. Uh, I think they'll, they're going to try and mirror it, aren't they? So, if, for example, if Huddersfield are playing Wigan on a weekend, then Huddersfield will play Wigan in the reserve. Oh, so right, they're going to do I think, that. I think, I think that, that's what, what they're trying to do. Um, I mean, and it probably makes sense, to be fair, because you can all mm -hmm. travel together. Some of the, and they probably get more fans as well, because some... Some of the Wigan fans yeah, might be willing go, to, yeah. to watch the, the reserve uh, game. Are they going to play them at the same ground? They'll be like double headers. Ah, they might not, though, because obviously football grounds. Might football. not let them do double headers. Well, some, some, I know Wigan need to get permission off Wigan Athletic for the under 19 grand final to be played. Who knows? But anyway, we'll, we'll say that works, but Joe Reg won't be used as much next year as it, as it has been in previous years. John Eaton also says, do the. Do players count on the overseas quarter if they play for GB? I think it's on about obviously the Australian bomb players. Um, Jackson Hastings. Well, it's weird. I, I, there's, a, there's obviously there's two different elements. In there. There's the non-federation trained element and there's the quarter element. If you can get a British pass, I would imagine that if Austin was on quota, he'd be getting a British passport to get off it. Um, I mean, I don't, there was an art, didn't they? Put, they published it all last season who the quarter players were, didn't they? Yeah. Um, On the RFL website. Yeah, there's obviously a difference between a quarter player and a non fed trained player. Uh, you would imagine that if you could play for Great Britain, you'd be trying to get off the quarter. Yeah. That's it from us for this week. Sponsored by Betfred. Thanks for everyone for watching. You can, of course, watch this on demand on the Love Rugby League Facebook page via YouTube and via the website. We also do it as a podcast as well. You can subscribe to that on iTunes, Spotify, Audio Boom, uh, and all that. We're hoping in the off-season to get some guests on the sofa, um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.